in the face. What's up, guys? Today I have another auto electric nerf blaster to show you. This is called the QWK Edge, and it's made by the same people who brought you the Challenger Mark III. This unit here was sent to me by Zenduo Toys based in China, and they sell it for 199 US dollars or around 288 Australian. And I'll leave a link down below. This is a spring powered blaster that when you pull the trigger it immediately fires a shot and then electronically cocks the spring and loads the next dart. Ready for you to pull the trigger again and again. Well that's how it's supposed to work. I've had some issues with mine that I'll mention later on in the video. First things first though, I want to point out that this Nerf Blaster is modelled after a real steel firearm. Specifically, it imitates the Flux Defense MP17 carbine kit attached to a SIG P320 pistol. Because of the appearance, even if you were to paint this friendly colours, I still wouldn't recommend using this in a public place, and in fact in places like Victoria, Australia, this thing would be outright banned because of the appearance alone. The real steel resemblance doesn't stop here though, it actually comes in a hard case with foam lining inside just like you'd see with a real firearm. Inside the hard case you get the blaster itself, a small battery, there's a much larger upgrade battery you can buy separately. You get a charging cable but not a charger. You get one mag though there's space to store two in the carry case. And you get some yellow foam knockoff Adventure Force Pro darts. The body of the blaster is made mostly of nylon with some metal parts like the bars for the stock, the stock release lever, and the slide stop. Overall, this blaster is a real lightweight at only 750 grams total. Now let's begin with what I'd call a controversial design choice with this blaster. And that is the battery. Rather than using your own LiPo, this blaster has its own batteries. Whether you use the stock battery it comes with or buy the upgraded 1100mAh one, you'll most likely want to use a charger like this IMAX B3 and just use the included male to male white 4 pin JST connector to charge the battery. You could use alligator clips on the terminals which are both marked positive for some reason but I think it'll be much simpler for people if you charge it as intended just using that JST connector. With your battery charger though, it simply slots inside the vertical grip at the front, where on the real steel firearm, you'd instead store spare magazines for quick access. I guess props for realism, although I would have preferred this just to be a battery door and then you have all this space inside to store your own LiPo battery. Next, let's take a look at the magazine. This is also proprietary, you can't use worker talons or any other mags with this blaster. And I found that dart zone bamboo darts or worker high-end darts were the most reliable to use in the QWK Edge. Some other types of darts like AF Pros seem to cause jams in this blaster. With the magazine loaded up with a maximum of 14 darts, it inserts into the grip of the blaster, which doesn't feel overly large like some mag and grip blasters do. Now, straight out of the box, my magazine release was a little stiff, but after working it a few times and I also added some silicon oil, it now drops free perfectly every single time. And now for probably the coolest gimmick about this blaster. Just like the real thing, the stock, or maybe I should call this the brace, is spring loaded. Hitting this lever on the right hand side of the blaster, it shoots out in the blink of an eye. To collapse it again, hold the lever down and push it back in, making sure the metal bars don't catch on the side of the blaster. With the battery inserted, mag inserted, and the very cool stock slash brace extended, let's fire the blaster. For your first shot of the day, you'll need to manually cock the blaster. Just pull back on the charging handle on the left hand side and then release. The QWK Edge has a closed bolt design, so as soon as you pull the trigger, the piston's already cocked and fires instantly, just like any other Springer. The trigger itself is a little weird, it has a Glock style safety which the real steel doesn't have. But simply pulling the trigger, the blaster fires semi-automatically one dart per trigger pull until empty. When you fired the last dart in the mag, the mag follower will be pushing up on the slide stop lever inside the blaster and the slide will lock back. Drop your empty mag out, insert a fresh mag and hit that slide stop lever to chamber the first dart automatically and then just pull the trigger to continue firing. 
One thing that I think is unique to the Edge, well, I haven't seen this with any other Nerf AEG yet, is that you can actually operate this blaster entirely without a battery installed. For example, if your battery died, just manually cycle the bolt for each shot, like you do for that first shot of the day. And when you've finished using the blaster for the day and you don't want to leave that spring cocked or it'll weaken over time, all you need to do is remove the battery and pull the trigger. Preferably with your finger over the end of the barrel so you aren't dry firing the blaster. Up top, the QWK Edge has some imitation fiber optic sights, two rear sight posts and one front sight. I would have liked to see mounting options for a red dot sight on top, but I think if you put screws through here, it might interfere with the action of the bolt. It's a bit of a pity because this blaster, and this actually surprised me when I noticed it, it has internal rifling molded as part of the inner barrel. So this should have some really nice accuracy. Below the barrel, it has some Picatinny rail for attaching something like a flashlight. It also has two sling points, one at the back of the blaster and one below the trigger guard. So this could easily be carried as a sidearm to a more powerful blaster. Also, at the rear of the blaster, it has a prime indicator, which tells you if the piston's back and ready to fire. One final thing I want to mention about the QWK Edge before we get to some firing demos is that each individual unit has a unique serial number engraved on the left front of the blaster. You can see here that I have unit number 2053, and I think having individual serial numbers is a nice touch. Now, before I get to the chrono test and the accuracy test, let's talk about an issue I've been having with my unit. I haven't seen anyone else with this issue yet, so mine might be the only one in the world doing it. But sometimes when I pull the trigger, it doesn't automatically cock the blaster again. Let's we'll see if we can get it to replicate that issue. You've got to cock it manually first. Yeah. The first time. Oh. Yep. And now see if we can get it to seize up where it uh, just doesn't cock automatically for you. Yeah, see? So now you pull the trigger, nothing happens. You gotta manually cock it again. I don't know why, it might, whether it's got wet or something, but try again, it should automatically cock. Yep, yep. Three that time. Again, but, oh, you do have darts inside as well. Yeah. That's so weird. Now that's the only issue I've had with mine. So now let's chrono the blaster and see just how hard it's shooting. I'm gonna fire the blaster manually because of that issue. First, six worker darts and then six dart zone bamboo darts. I definitely recommend getting the longer battery. One forty-five. One forty-two. One forty-four. 145, 145, 117. Worker darts had a high of 145 and an outlier low of 117. Every so often with worker darts, a shot would drop lower than the rest in my testing. So including the low shot, worker darts shot an average of 139. Now let's do bamboo darts from Dart Zone. 146, 150, 149, 143, 150, and 152. Bamboo darts shot a high of 150, a low of 143, and an average of 148. Overall, bamboo darts seem to be a little bit more consistent than worker darts in this blaster and shot slightly faster too. Something to keep in mind though is that bamboo darts do weigh three quarters the weight of a worker dart, so of course they're gonna shoot faster out of this blaster. So now let's head over to the firing range and see how accurate the QWK Edge is with the same darts we used for the chrono test. Being a low velocity pistol blaster, I'll be testing it at a distance of 20 meters with worker darts first.
Bamboos now. Worker darts marked in red shot a grouping about 80 centimetres wide, while bamboo darts in yellow shot a grouping almost half the size, at around 50 centimetres in width. I think something about the rifling in this blaster is definitely more suited to bamboo style darts than thicker and heavier worker darts. Let's head back inside for some final thoughts on the edge, and then I'll hit the field for some gameplay. Okay guys, so first of all, just a quick reminder that my unit has a pretty terrible issue with it where I'm just firing the blaster and sometimes it won't actually cock the spring for me. It just decides it doesn't want to be an AEG anymore. Then I have to manually cock it and it continues firing after that. But even with that flaw, which it's quite possible mine's the only one in the world doing it, I'd still say this blaster is better than a manual spring pistol of similar power, like the Dart Zone Pro Mark II or the S200 Fire Rat. When it works, this is the expensive $200 upgrade to all of those kind of blasters in that 150 FPS range. When it doesn't work, I still can't say it's worse than those manual pistols because it still cocks the shots for you sometimes. Plus, you could just remove the battery altogether and you have something on par with all those other manual springers. One downside or upside, depending on where you live, is that this is modelled after a real steel firearms carbine kit for a sick pistol. So that completely makes this illegal to own in a lot of places like Victoria here in Australia. But for those of us who play on private fields, this is a nice blaster. Semi-auto, 150 feet per second, 14 shot capacity. And with its compact size, it's ideal for close quarter battles, either as a sidearm or a primary. One final complaint I have with this blaster is it would be nice if you could mount some kind of red dot sight on here. As it stands currently, I think if I put these long bolts through, it would interact with the action of the blaster and block it from working. It's a bit of a pity you can't use a red dot sight on here because it does have a rifled barrel and some decent accuracy at 20 meters. The only reason I didn't test it further back at 30 meters is because with these iron sights, it's really hard to judge holdover. And with 150 FPS, you really do have to aim the blaster up a fair way to make it to 30 meters. With a red dot sight, that would be way easier to do. But let's see how well I went using it at the Battle for Waterloo Gel Blaster Skirmish Field. And keep your eyes peeled for me cocking the blaster manually when it decides not to be an AEG anymore. Enjoy the gameplay. In the face. Couldn't resist.
Do the cop again. I just hit you in the hand. Surely you felt that one too. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Let's go! Cover, moving across. Red. Right? <laughs> we are alive or dead. <laughs> That's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Click on my profile icon to subscribe to the channel. And here's two other videos that you might enjoy. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.